we're going to talk a little bit about pop culture along Colfax Avenue. And what first really attracted me to Colfax was when I read the book On the Road. Of course, Jack Kerouac's seminal book about the beat generation, kind of what got the whole thing really kicked off. He and Allen Ginsberg, and of course, Neil Cassidy. Uh, Neil Cassidy grew up in Denver. His dad was a Larimer Street, you know, wino. He was also a barber, you know, when he showed up. Uh, but Neil writes in his uh, biography, First Third, that you know you can always count on Dad for what he called his Saturday drunk. But Neil grew up in the pool halls, used to run with a lot of street kids, used to steal cars and pick up girls at East High, and you know take them up to the mountains and you know do all sorts of things. And uh, you know Neil was kind of a wild one, but he also had a side to him where he desperately wanted to do better for himself. He wanted to make a place in the world. He wanted to kind of marry above his station. He wanted to meet a society girl. He was always at the uh, Denver City Library, the old Carnegie Library, which today's the McNichols Building on Colfax. And uh, he actually claimed that he had read every book in the library, which was very possible. He was very intelligent, very curious, and uh, and you know, despite his uh, lack of formal education, he was very desperate to be educated and be able to hold his own, you know, with those DU sorority girls over there, which one of them he eventually did meet and marry, Carolyn Cassidy. Carolyn actually had a room over there at the Colburn, a uh, great bar down there, Charlie Brown's the Colburn Hotel. That place is a legendary beat. Uh, Place still pouring drinks today. Still go there to sit around the piano and sing a few songs with the with the ladies there. Uh, you know, well, gentlemen too. Everyone sits around that piano, uh, but incredible. So Neil meets Carolyn there. They're living there, and uh, or maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, I guess, because we have to talk about how the Beats it were introduced to each other. Now, San Francisco and New York, you know, they got their heavy claims on on the beat thing and you know they got their Vesuvio and their NYU and their yeah you know City Lights books what you know okay Ferlinghetti we love you but you know what I'm saying they overlook Denver's kind of the flyby state in this equation well let's set the record straight the beat generation would not have happened without an introduction that happened there at that Denver Public Library okay Hal Chase met Neil uh, uh, at, in that very library, his freshman year, Hal meets Jack Kerouac and Allen Ginsberg and says to him, you know, there is this beat, we, he wouldn't have used the beat yet, right, but he would have said, you know, there is this crazy, you know, cowboy kid, like, hero of the West out there in Denver, and you've got to meet this guy, he's, he's something else, makes the introduction, and so if that chance happening wouldn't have happened on Colfax, Neil would not have been introduced to, to Kerouac or uh, Ginsburg, and you know, no beat generation. What would On the Road have been about? It would have been Jack Kerouac sitting home with his mom and getting all existential on Tom Wolfe or something. So let's not kid ourselves, people. All right, another great story about that is well, you know, you read On the Road, it talks about Colfax a lot. There's, it mentions it many times. It talks about roaring out East Colfax on the Kansas Plains, they talk about hitting a hot shop. I've never been able to find a picture of the hot shop, but apparently there was an old coffee shop called the Hot Shop on West Colfax, and they talk about hitting the road houses and these bars on West Colfax, as well as down in Five Points to see the best jazz, you know, Denver and, you know, the U.S. for all that matter. Everybody who is coming from the coast, coast to coast, uh, in the kind of black jazz scene, everyone played five points at that time. Sammy, Sammy Davis Jr., I understand, even hosted an open mic in five points at one time. Incredible thing. So the other story we would have to talk about would be the Joan Anderson letter. Now, if you've ever seen a movie called The Last Time I Committed Suicide, it stars Keanu Reeves, of all people, as Jack Kerouac. And, you know, considering, you know, our Bill and Ted uh, uh, you know, dimension here of an actor. You know, he does a fair job, but uh, I, it was, you know, it was all right. But the reason I bring this up is not the movie or you, Keanu, because you know, Dog Star was the best, buddy. But you know, is to talk about the Knob Hill Inn. 
There is a bar on East Colfax called the Knob Hill. It, I went back and searched the city records to find how old that bar was, and I found mentions in, 19, in the 1930s, 1935 that the Knob Hill was a thing. It's still called the Knob Hill today. It never changed its name in all those years. And uh, apparently in this Joan Anderson letter, this is a letter that Neil sent to Jack Kerouac writing about this night that he had where he lost Joan Anderson, his future wife, and how he destroyed the marriage. And basically, in the letter, it talks about when he took that left turn on Colfax, and that's where the story started getting, you know, getting wild. But Jack read this letter, and he credits the Joan Anderson letter with the writing style he uses in On the Road. He said he reads this letter, it's the greatest piece of literature I've ever read, and this is the stream of consciousness, much like your narrator today, this is the stream of consciousness style that I want to use in my road book. Okay, so what's important about that is that this letter disappeared for years and years, okay? It recently, just recently resurfaced. And I met the guy who found this letter, and I actually got to look at it because it was my theory for years that the bar they were talking about in the letter was the Knob Hill, right? So he let me actually read the letter, and I got to the part, and it talks about the very block and how he walks in there and sees these really weird windows, and he keeps describing how strange these windows are. And if you've ever been in the Knob Hill and look at those windows right there, you are like, what was that guy thinking who made those windows? So I, I'm pretty sure that's it. Anyway, the letter just sold at auction. I, I, I heard for for $380,000, it belongs to university now, and it happened here on East Colfax. Neil also in the letter, here's Neil up there on the wall, we've got a, a picture of him. He attended East High School on Colfax for a little while, but he didn't graduate. Uh, actually rumored that he had an affair with one of the male teachers at the high school, Justin Brierley, who was also thought he was a very, uh, Cassidy had a lot of promise and intelligence and apparently other things. Uh, but uh, there, Neil, in his letter, in the Joan Anderson letter, talks about Cherry Mary. Anyone who has read On the Road uh, knows how they talk about Cherry Mary. She lived at 16th and High Street, right down here, which is Colfax and High, uh, more or less. And uh, Neil describes for about a page and a half in detail every place that he made love to Cherry Mary on Capitol Hill. And let me just like, you know, paint a picture for you. Like, you can't set foot on Capitol Hill and not be somewhere where Neil and Cherry were together. So keep that in mind when you're sitting there in the football stands at East High or you're standing at the Taco Bell there used to be the Oasis drive-in where he would steal a car and you know right there in the parking lot folks anyway that letter should be published soon and uh, Neil set a very fine precedent for what Colfax is to become which we'll talk about next <laughs>